This question appeared on a video which explained how to copy tables of data from Excel into a new Word document. And what this user wanted to do was basically the opposite of that, copy the tables from Word back into Excel. So that's what we'll show you how to do in this short video. To get started, I've got a blank Excel workbook already saved as a macro enabled file. And that's saved in the same folder as a Word document containing four different tables. Each table contains a list of the 10 highest grossing films in a particular year, starting in 2020 and working backwards through to 2017. I'm just going to close down that document for the time being, and I'll pop a link in the video description so that you can download these same two files that, as I'm working on, so you can follow along if you'd like to. The starting point in the Visual Basic Editor from Excel is to insert a new module, which I've already done, and then create a new subroutine called Import Word Tables, or something along those lines. Next, I'd like to write some code to open up the Word document, and to make sure I get plenty of help from the IntelliSense, I'm going to start by heading to the Tools menu, choose References, and then scroll down through the list to find the Microsoft Word object library. The version I currently have on my machine is version 16, so just go with whichever version you currently have available, check the box next to that library, and then click OK. I can then define a couple of variables using classes defined in that library. So I'll start by saying dim wd as word.application, and then dim doc as word.document. I can then create a new instance of the word application by saying set wd equals new word.application. And I'd like to see Word appear on screen so that I can see what's happening as I'm testing my code. So I'm going to say wd.visible equals true. I'm then going to open up the document and capture a reference to it in the second variable by saying set doc equals wd.documents.open. I can then open up some parentheses and inside those parentheses pass in the file name to the file that I want to open. That's stored in the same folder as the Excel workbook is stored. So I can start by referencing the this workbook.path variable or property. And then I can concatenate to the end of that a backslash and movies.docx, which is the file name, of course. Having done that, I'm just going to give the code a quick test by hitting the F5 key to run it. And we should see an, a new open instance of Word with that document open up, ready to grab its tables. Just like any collection of objects in VBA, we can loop through the tables collection of a document using a for each loop. Let's just close down the Word document first, and then we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm going to declare another variable to help me with the for each loop. Let's say dim tbl as word.table. I'll also want to place each table from Word on a separate Excel worksheet. So I'm going to declare a new variable to hold a reference to the worksheet that I'll create, dim ws as worksheet. Then to begin looping through the tables collection, I can say for each tbl in doc.tables. I can then refer to the range property of the table object and copy that by saying tbl.range.copy. Then I can create a new worksheet by saying set ws equals this workbook dot worksheets dot add. And then I can say ws dot paste special to paste the copy table into that worksheet. I'll then move on to the next table by saying next tbl, and then add a bit of tidying up code to close down the document first of all by saying doc.close, and then finally wd.quit to close down the Word application entirely. Next, we can simply run the subroutine to see what results we get. So we should see a new set of worksheets appearing once the Word document's opened, one worksheet for each table in the document before the Word application closes down. And if we have a quick look back at the Excel worksheets that we've generated, we can see we've got an embedded Word document for each table that was in the Word document pasted onto a new Excel worksheet. Now, an embedded Word document object isn't quite the end result I was going for. I prefer to have my Word table pasted into the Excel cells to look like an Excel table. So we have a little more work to do. Let's see what other options we've got available. I'm going to head over to the folder in which that Word document is stored and open it up. And then I'm going to manually copy one of the tables from there and head back to Excel, select a cell, and then have a look at what we, what we can see in the Paste Special dialog box. 
So if I choose Paste Special, we can see we get a list of Paste As options. And the top option in that list, the default option, is Microsoft Word Document Object, which is exactly why we got embedded documents when we pasted in using our code. So if we were to choose one of the other options in that list, say text or Unicode text or HTML, then we'll end up with different results. So let's choose text for this first one and then click OK. And that gives us the plain text version of that table. If I select a different cell and then head back to the paste special option again, I can this time choose HTML and click OK. And that provides me with the formatted version of the same text. So what we have to do now is work out how to specify those values in the paste special method. I'm just going to start by tidying up this workbook. I'm going to delete all of those extra worksheets. I will happily delete those, yes. And then I want to close down my Word document as well. And then back into the Visual Basic Editor, find the paste special method, and then type in a space immediately after it to find the first optional parameter called format. So any of the options in the paste as list are valid values you can paste in or pass in here as a string. So let's go for the plain text option first of all. I'll pass in the word text and that will paste in the word table as a plain text table. So if I run the subroutine again at this point, we'll see a new set of worksheets will appear when the word document has opened up. But this time, if I have a look back at the Excel worksheets, I get the plain text versions of those tables. So that's OK so far. Let's try the HTML version. I'm going to select and delete those worksheets. And then back into the Visual Basic Editor, I can change the text to HTML. And then when I run the subroutine again, this time when the document opens up, I'll get the nicely formatted versions of those four tables. So checking back in Excel, that's exactly what we've ended up with. All we really need to do now is tidy up the results a bit, perhaps by changing the widths of the columns of the table that's been pasted in. So to do that, I'm going to delete the existing worksheets again by right clicking and choosing to delete them and confirming that I want to do that. And then back in the Visual Basic Editor, after pasting in the table as an HTML table, I'm going to say ws.range a1.currentregion.entireColumn.autofit. So this time when I run the subroutine again, I'll end up with another four worksheets, each one of which will contain a separate table. But this time when I look at the end results, each table has the column set to the correct width to display the data inside the table. So there we go. That's the basic technique for importing word tables into an Excel workbook. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.